Hello all, welcome to part 57 of TestNG training series. In this session, I'm going to explain and practically demonstrate how to use invocation count attribute in TestNG. So let's get started. First of all, this invocation count attribute can be used with at the rate test annotation. Okay, at the rate test annotation has a lot of attributes can be used and one of the attribute out of them that can be used with at the rate test annotation is invocation count. Okay, so what is this attribute? You see, you can mention something like this at the rate test invocation count is equal to five. What will happen when you mention invocation count is equal to five beside this at the rate test? That particular test method will run y number of times. You don't have to use any loops or something, guys. Simply provide invocation count is equal to five. This is the best way to run the same test method five number of times. Invocation count is equal to five. If you want it 10 times, you have to mention invocation count is equal to 10. So I will practically demonstrate one example where exactly you can use invocation count in real time. Okay. So this particular sample example statement will run the test method five times. If it is 10 mentioned, 10 times. Okay. So practical demonstration, I'm going to take an example website, guys. This is the example website I'm going to take. Okay which will generate a random number every time. I'll copy this URL and show you how this uh, website looks like first. I'm going to automate this website using Selenium automation using very simple automation script. You see, once you go to this website URL, if you click on here already by default one and hundred are there, we are not going to touch that numbers. We simply are going to click on generate button and you will get a random number. Again, you will open the application for the second time and click on generate, you will get another random number. This number will retrieve and print in the output. Okay, this is what I want to do guys. How many number of times I will decide. Okay, so I'll open this Eclipse IDE. Here, I'll create under SRC test. Here I'll create a class. Let's say already sample class, sample class I'll create, right click new. I'll just mention the name of the class as sample guys. And inside the sample class, I'll create a test method. Just wait for this to load. Public void. Okay. General uh, print random number. I'll just give some. Okay, random number. Some random name I'm giving also. Okay, test. Or you can ignore this test keyword also. Not a problem. Here at the rate test, you'll write test annotation. You write over the mouse. Over the mouse on this at the rate test and import this uh, at the rate uh, import this test annotation from test engine. Now write, write some piece of code. Web driver manager. This project is already configured with web, web driver manager, Selenium, test engine, and all those stuff. You don't have to do anything because in the previous session it is already covered. Okay. Set up then web driver. Driver is equal to new Chrome driver. It will open the Chrome browser. It will launch the Chrome browser. I would import this web driver interface from Selenium and also Chrome driver interface or Chrome driver class also I have to import from Selenium library. Then I have to say maximize the browser driver dot manage dot window dot maximize. This will maximize the driver window, browser window. Then driver dot get. Here I have to provide the URL of the application that I want to automate. Just now I showed you the URL of the application. This is the URL guys, okay? Calculator dot net random number generator dot HTML. This is the URL. I'll copy paste this uh, URL here first and then copy this URL after it is working into the code, okay? Just to make sure everything is fine. After I go to this application URL, what I want to do here is, after I go to this application URL, I want to click on this generate button. I'll right click, inspect this generate button. I'll get this HTML code for the generate button. This is HTML code. It has submit one as a name attribute value. Copy this. And here, I'll simply say, driver dot find element by dot name, name attribute, right? I'll give the name at name attribute value of that uh, generate button. I'll say click dot click. It will click on the button. The moment it clicks on the button, what will happen? A number kind of thing. Some random number will appear here. I'll inspect this number, guys. And uh, we have to locate this number, guys. Okay, this number is between the tags. You see, between the paragraph tags, we have the number. But uh, I uh, very big text uh, class is there. I don't know whether any other thing have this very big text as a class thing. But I'll copy this very big text. Okay. Uh, I'll create an next path double slash P. Let's see, control F. Uh, 
double slash p at the rate class is equal to if i give very big text if it is locating only one element then we are good okay it's locating only 53 yeah we are good guys okay we can take this x path or class name also is fine i guess in that case by dot class name or by dot x path anything is fine give that x path dot get text okay i'll retrieve the text guys this particular text i want to print out okay i want to print this text guys okay i want to get this text and print it string uh, random number this will be random number and i'll be printing out system dot out print ln i'll just print random number here whatever the random number that is retrieved that will be printed after that i'll quit the browser after that i'll quit the browser okay this is what i want to do guys so if i run this code how many times this particular test method will run only one time in the output only one random number will be printed just run this code you'll see that chrome browser will open it will maximize it will open this application url then it will click on the generate button and random number will be generated and retrieved and printed in the output and browser will quit close just see here what will happen click on the generate button random number got generated and it got printed in the output 40 right only one time what if i want to execute the same test method five times or 10 times let's say 10 times okay i just clicked on that it will run i have to stop it so here what i will do here is i'll close this here what i will do is still running okay here beside the test at the rate test annotation, I'll say invocation count is equal to 10. I'll say when I say invocation count attribute, if I specify after the at the rate test annotation method and give a value like 10 or something here, like this, okay. If I give the number like this, practical demonstration I'm doing, guys, okay. So this same test method will be running 10 times, okay. It will be repeated 10 times. Every time it clicks on generate number, some random number will be generated and that will be printed. 10 random numbers will be printed in the output for us now, okay? Instead of one. That is what is invocation count, guys, okay? It will invoke the same test method 10 times. The better way, you don't have to use any for loop to run the same test method code 10 times. Rather, just provide this invocation count. One time, eight number came. Second time it is running. Click on generate 84 number came printed in the output. You can see the output uh, back 55. Whether 55 got printed, yes. Then generate 35 number got 35 got printed. Generate 49, 49 got printed. Generate 27, 27 got printed. Generate 45, 45 got printed. Generate 19, 19 got printed. 10 times case, it has to run 10 times. Same method will be executed 10 times, 33. 38 done 10 times the same test method got executed and if you see here 10 random numbers got printed 1 8 84 55 3 35 4 49 5 27 6 45 7 19 8 33 9 38 10 10 times okay you see the method 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Same test method got executed 10 times. This is what is the invocation count attribute and this is how we have to use the invocation count with at the rate test annotation. Okay. So uh, there are a few more attributes guys. Okay. Which work along with the invocation count. They are nothing but invocation timeout and uh, thread pool size attributes. We can use these attributes with the invocation count. So I'll be covering these two attributes in the next sessions. Okay. So how to use this invocation timeout with invocation count and how to use this thread pool size with this invocation count. I'm going to cover in the next sessions. Okay. So that's all for this session, guys. This is how we have to use invocation count along with the editor test annotation. So that's all. In the next session, I'm going to cover another test topic for you. Till then, see you. Bye-bye.